Good afternoon. I'm just going to come out and say it. You're probably judging me really hard right now. And that's all right, because it's not every day that you come to one of these events and you find a 16-year-old pageant girl standing in front of you. So without further ado, I'm going to examine these things that you might be thinking of while you judge me. The first of those is a controversial television show that highlights the glitz pageant world called Toddlers and Tiaras. And this picture really kind of outlines the whole thing. This little girl is wearing a lot of makeup, a lot of self-tanner, some hair extensions, and kind of a skimpy outfit. And she's no older than probably about seven. Another thing you might be thinking about is the swimwear competition. And one common misconception that comes with that is that every single pageant has one. Incorrect. I've competed with four different organizations and held titles in three out of those four and have never once had to compete in a swimwear competition, let alone have any of them even had one. Another misconception about the swimsuit competition is that it's meant to objectify and degrade women and just simply to get ratings on television. Also incorrect. Take the Miss America organization, for example. They are first and foremost a scholarship organization rather than a pageant. The girls that compete with them and hold titles from the local, state, and national levels all get scholarships to go to school. Those girls want to be doctors. They want to be lawyers. They want to be journalists. Basically, any occupation you can think of that requires a formal degree, they want to be that. And they're going to get that money to further their education. Take the first African-American Miss America, Vanessa Williams. She's a very prominent actress now. And she first entered the Miss Syracuse Scholarship Organization pageant because she wanted to get money for school. She entered as a joke. She had no idea she was going to become Miss America and a world famous actress. Look where, she, uh, look where she ended up. Now, the other thing you might be thinking about is that pageant girls are dumb, which is wrong 95% of the time. <laughs> uh, pageant girls really when you think about the Miss America organization, that is where that comes in. Pageant girls win their pageants in interview. The judges take that time to really look at who the girl is, what she believes in, and how she believes she can impact her community in a positive way. And that's how the judges figure out who will take home the crown. Now. As you can see, my crown can be an obstacle sometimes, because even my closest friends see me in this light. But my crown is really an opportunity. Take that toddlers and tiara stereotype, for, for example. Oh, most of the pageants out there are natural pageants, which means that t girls ages 12 and under are not allowed to wear makeup. And you can see this by the first picture of me there. It's my first pageant when I was 11 years old. And I'm obviously not wearing any makeup. I'm wearing a business suit, not a stripper outfit. So <laughs> there you go. Um, fast forward about four years. I've been involved in the pageant industry for that amount of time. I came out of my awkward stage. And the pageant industry made me privy to my capability to go out there and be something in my community and make the world a better place. And that's why pageant girls are typically more involved in their communities than their peers who are not involved in pageantry. I became the secretary of my local block club. There's a picture of me cleaning up trash in my neighborhood for National Neighborhood Cleanup Day. And I also serve on Sergio Rodriguez's campaign strategy team. And those are just two examples of things that I do in my community. Pageants also have that interview competition, like I said before. But pageantry also instills in you communication skills. I assure you, I would not be standing before you today if I had not entered a pageant. Now, taking this into account, we all have our own crowns of character that serve as both an obstacle and an opportunity. My literal crown just happens to serve as one example of one of mine. But everyone in the world has their own. So I'm going to highlight some of the other ones that exist right now. My, I'm sure you all remember being 16 at some point. If you're women, you were wondering when that cute boy over there was going to ask you out, when that acne was going to come off your face, when your boobs were going to grow in, and why that girl is being so mean to you. Were you bullied in high school? I'm pretty sure everybody gets it at some point. 
Well, my friend Brianna, she's from Clarence, which is a pretty affluent suburb, as most of you, I'm sure, know. And she decided to go to a horse show in Orchard Park one day. And she met a couple of girls there. And they assumed, when they found out she was from Clarence, that she was snobby, mean, and wasn't really aware of what was going on around her because she always just had to ask her dad for money and she got to go do whatever she wanted. Well, basically they saw her as this. But she took this as an opportunity to show them who she really was. A caring, fun-loving girl who often works for her money. And she went over, she talked to them, they saw how great she was, and they became friends. She took her crown of character, where she came from, turned that obstacle into an opportunity to make some new friends. Fast forward about 20 years. I'm sure everybody in here has their foot in the entrepreneurship world somehow, or maybe you get this at home or in your workplace, wherever. But if you are a woman, one day there will come a time for all of us that we will be belittled or discriminated against because we are women. And I have a family friend named Karen. She's in her 40s, and she's been working in mortgage banking for 15 plus years, so she knows what she's doing. And her male higher-ups decided one day that she was not capable of doing her job because she was a woman. They took her job out from under her, gave her job to a younger male, and tried to make her become the assistant of her male replacement. Basically, they saw her as this. Now, she took this as an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm too good and I'm too confident for this. She left her job and went to a better company where she no longer feels degraded. Now, she took this as an opportunity to turn her crown of character, her gender, and turn it into an opportunity to get a better job than she had before. Now, taking all these things into account, pageantry, um, where Brianna was from, Karen's gender issue, they all helped us become who we are today and reinvent ourselves. But the big question here is, who are you? And how have you been invented here? What is your crown of character? When was it that you found out that your crown of character was an obstacle? When did you find out you needed to turn it into an opportunity instead of being dragged down by it your entire life? When you found that out, you must have known what was important to you and why it was important, whether it was your religion, your morals, your career, your education, your family, whatever it may have been, you knew it was the first priority for you and you figured out a way to make it important by setting a goal and working really hard to get there. You turned that obstacle into an opportunity by first forgetting what other people had to say and kind of tuning out what anyone thought of you you stared those judgments in the eye and spit on them. Because you can't take what anyone says about you and you know, really live that way. Because it, at the end of the day, you are who you define yourself as. You set a goal. You worked really hard to get there. I'm sure everybody in this room knows that when you want something, you have to work for it. You can't just sit on your butt and it appears in front of you. And you did what you wanted. You thought, you knew what, your, what was important to you, you knew what your goal was, you worked hard to get there, and you did what you wanted, and you didn't do what those other people told you you should do, and you did what those people told you you shouldn't have. But thinking about this time in your life, take a step back. Think about that process. And think about if you've ever had a family friend or a daughter or anyone you know come up to you going through this same struggle. If you have a daughter or a family friend or a stranger on the street come up to you and say, I want to be a pageant girl. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a fry cook at McDonald's. Whatever it is that they may say, are you going to empower them and help them go through their journey and turn that obstacle into an opportunity? Or are you going to disempower them and become their obstacle and make it harder for them to go through that journey that was so hard for you in the first place? It's important during your process and after your process that you recognize that this is important for everyone and help others through their journey. Congratulations. You realized what your crown of character was. You turned that obstacle into an opportunity. And you are where you are today because of it. And now, not only do you see you for who you are, others see you for who you are. Brandi Chastain. Thank you.